instruction class in the catechism, we're in prayer, in the Lord's Prayer. During our worship service, this is a day that we are observing and celebrating the sacrament of the altar, the Lord's Supper, and we invite everyone to come up. You're more than welcome to come up. However, we do practice what's called close communion, and if you are not a member of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, we invite you to come up, but please cross your arms so that we can give you a blessing in that fellowship. Um, the other thing is, you have an announcement. Next Sunday, bring your loose change because we have something exciting going on with the kids. Megan, what do you have there? What are you talking about? There? Show everybody that noisy offering up there. He's coming. That's what it's going to sound like only probably ten times. <laughs> All right, thank you. So that's next Sunday. You've got, want to bring your pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, half dollars, silver dollars, gold dollars. <laughs> You're more than welcome to do that. If it's gold, be careful not to throw it in there too hard. If it's gold, see me. <laughs> that's my numismatic, that's my collector's side. All right. Um, <clears throat> yes. Uh, Sunday, May 5th, there'll be a pancake breakfast to uh, help support the term bishop process. Ah, all right. Uh, two weeks. So, in two weeks, on the first Sunday in May, we are having pancakes. And it's a fundraiser for the, the short term mission trips. <laughs> We are also going to be ha observing and celebrating uh, confirmation. Nobody else knows that yet, but now you all do. On that very same Sunday, uh, we will celebrate with uh, Leighton Heinemann. He'll be confirmed on that during that service as well. Any other? Yes. So I'm going to repeat it because I have a microphone and people who are online always complain to me that they never hear the announcements. So, Vacation Bible School is going to be the 10th through the 14th of June. And that's, uh, it's very important for many different reasons, but that you register for it. Uh, so just go online if you need help. By all means, call the office. Angie will be glad to help you through that. But if you'll register for Vacation Bible School, that helps us in so many ways. And we would appreciate that. And there's supplies, there's T-shirts, all of those kinds of good things. So the announcement is in the bulletin about Vacation Bible School. Please register. There's also another announcement in the bulletin that I wanted to emphasize, but I don't remember what it is, so let me take a look here. I'll take it from my son-in-law. Oh, yes, tuition assistance. I do want to bring that out. I saw that there. Um, if you are going to go to school at St. Paul's Lutheran School across the river there in Sioux City, we have a fund to help with the tuition, but we need you to apply. You'll note the deadline is here in about three weeks, the 15th of May. 
uh, please get an application and fill it out. It's, it's pretty simple, um, and that way we can help with the tuition uh, for going to St. Paul's. We want to encourage that. That's the announcement I wanted to know. Any other announcements? <clears throat> All right. We start with our first hymn, hymn number 710. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastures green, he leadeth me. The quiet waters by. My soul he doth restore again, and me to walk doth make within the paths of righteousness, e'en for his own name's sake. Yea, though I walk in death's dark veil, yet will I fear no ill. For Thou art with me and Thy rod and staff me comfort still. My table thou hast furnished in presence of my foes. My head thou dost with oil anoint, and my cup overflows. Goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me and in God's house forevermore my dwelling place shall be We rise as we join together in worship and praise of our living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We follow the order of divine service setting one, and you can find it on page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all your sins. 
as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority. I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May be seated for the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God. And for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We sing, This is the Feast. This is the Feast of Victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We pray together the colic for the day found printed on page two inside of your worship bulletin. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
the first reading for the fourth Sunday of Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday, comes from Acts chapter 4. This will be the basis for our meditation together this morning. As they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the word believed, and the number of the men came about to came to about 5,000. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has now become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. We join together with the psalm for the day, which is the 23rd psalm. That's in the front part of your hymnal. It starts at the very beginning. Uh, page one is Psalm 1, and you just keep going until you get to the 23rd Psalm. And we're going to read this psalm together, hopefully for obvious reasons. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our epistle lesson comes from 1 John, the third chapter. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our hearts before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit whom he has given us. 
This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own knows me just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Having now heard God's word, we join together joyfully confessing our faith in that triune God by speaking together the words of the Nicene Creed. You can find those words printed for you on page 158. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May be seated for hymn 709.
My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. What joy fills our hearts to know that fact, that because he lives, we live for now and forever. There's some comfort that comes during this time of the celebration, that fourth Sunday of Easter as we're partway through. It's also called Good Shepherd Sunday. And there is a lot of comfort, I think, that's found in that. There's that familiarity. The words of our text are indeed from the first reading from Acts chapter 4. But I want to read verse 12 for you once again. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given by among men by which we must be saved. And that is our text. If those words that I just read to you just glossed over, you were comfortable, they just went through, you didn't even pay attention, and it just happened, praise God for that faith that gives you that confidence and that assurance. You see, we live in a world that tells you that there is salvation in so many different ways, so many different places. But yet scripture is very clear. And Peter and John were arrested for healing a lame man. And because they did that, they were arrested. Because you see, they were giving God all the glory. They were giving the name of Jesus Christ. And the world did not like it. And so they were arrested. And when asked, by what power... By what name are you doing this? They simply said, you're upset that we did something that was good and helpful to somebody? I will tell you that name. It's Jesus Christ, and there is salvation in no one else. Jesus alone. Now, if this is common again for you, praise God. If you don't know about all the controversy in so-called Christian churches that are teaching and preaching things other than that, praise God for that. Let's lay that foundation. But I have to admit to you that there is some joy in what I like to call comfort food. Comfort food. We probably all have that. You know, for most of us, it's meat and potatoes. I've had to change my comfort food a little bit. I had to get rid of the meat, so it's actually potatoes, which I'm not supposed to have. But there's comfort in that. And I have to admit, here lately, I've been celebrating a holiday uh, every, every Monday. I don't know whether you know this, but Monday is Pi Day. It's free pie day. That means I've been going to Perkins every Monday after our Poland team meeting and being able to do that with Kirsten. And now Maddie has joined us on free pie Monday. But there's some comfort that comes in that because I've done that enough times. My waitress comes up to me and tells me my order. And just so you know, my waitress at Red Lobster does the same exact thing. <laughs> There's comfort in, for me to be able to have that consistency to do the exact same thing. There's comfort for that. Now, I get teased and made fun of all the time for doing that, but I want you to understand in a world where there's so much change and turbulence, we want that foundation. We want to hear the consistency there's comfort that comes for that. Look forward to it. So the potatoes, and for me it's mushrooms. That's replaced the meat. There's some real comfort, and every time I take that first bite, I go, hmm. I do the same thing with my fish and chips or with my shrimp. Mmm. You see, we have this desire as Christians, and it comes today. 
inadvertently, one or two of you have come to me and told me today that you were looking forward to the music for today. There's comfort in that consistency, isn't there? To be able to sing these Good Shepherd hymns, to have sung the 23rd Psalm, to have said the 23rd Psalm. We may not understand all the details of what it takes to shepherd sheep, but there's comfort for us to know that Jesus is our Good Shepherd. There's comfort to know that we know that He alone is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by Him. And for us to hear that again and again, for us to hear that salvation is in no one else and in nothing else but in Jesus Christ alone. There's no other name, none in under heaven by which we can be saved. There's comfort that we know this. We believe it. And it doesn't even matter if we understand it because to tell you the truth, where I find comfort in my consistency or in certain foods, I don't have to understand it. All I have to do is receive it and just go, and I have to admit, I never expect my waitresses to know my order, never. And even though they do, I praise God. There's some comfort that comes to me going, hmm, everybody looks at me like I'm somebody special, and I am. (laughs) This Good Shepherd Sunday, everybody looks at you this day because your faith is in that Good Shepherd. You're so used to it, and you are that special. I know my sheep. And my sheep know me. That's what Jesus says. I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for my sheep. Oh, yes. There is so much comfort to know that I, the worst sinner there ever was, ever is, or ever will be. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I am the chief of sinners. I am the worst sinner But there's comfort to be able to hear that in all my sins, he still loves me. He comes and forgives me. He dies on a cross to take those sins away from me. There is comfort that's there because salvation is in Jesus alone. What joy fills our hearts that even though I don't always understand it and I may not feel it, To be able to have that consistency again and again and again. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. There's nothing I'm ever going to want. Ah, yes. He takes care of everything. Everything for me. What do I have to worry about? Seriously. If we focus on the fact that he is our good shepherd and he takes care of everything and he lays down his life for us, Do you think he's going to abandon you now? Seriously, think about it. He suffered and he died on a cross because he had you very personally in mind to take all your sins away. He gave his life for you. What do you have to worry about? What can separate us from the love of God that's found in Christ Jesus? Can it be persecution? How about danger, sword? What is it? Paul will go on and say, I can face death all day long. That's a bold statement, really, when you think about it. In the world that we live in that wants to take us out of our comfort, wants to shake you up, make you really nervous and very scared about everything. Ah, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And there's nothing I have to worry about. You see, this is celebrated in the midst of the resurrection because, you see, this isn't a one time and done. He didn't die on a cross, and now, okay, he took care of it, but now you're left on your own. 
He didn't rise again from the dead and say, okay, now you're on your own. This is a continuing thing. As a good shepherd lays down his life for a sheep, he keeps coming to us. He takes us into his arms. He holds us. Some of your favorite artwork is Jesus as a shepherd holding the sheep, either in his arms or over his shoulders. And I've shared with you before, one of my most favorite of all is the picture of Jesus as a good shepherd. And he's holding me in his arms. He's carrying me on his shoulders. And I know it's me because you know why? This artwork shows Jesus as the good shepherd holding a black sheep. That's me. I know I'm different. But he did that for me. What do I have to worry about? What do I have to be afraid? By what power or authority do you have to be able to say and believe what you say and you believe? Just like the Pharisees were asking Peter and John, why in the world would you do such this good thing like healing a lame man? And Peter says, I didn't. Jesus did. There are many things that we just are and do because of our faith in Christ and how Christ works within us and through us. And it's all because of the cross of Jesus Christ and all because of the empty tomb. We know our sins are forgiven and it may not always feel like it. That's us listening to the rest of the world. But now we hear the voice of our good shepherd saying, I love you. I love you so very much that I will be with you always. Come on, some of the times that we're scared is when we feel like we're all alone, that God has abandoned us, and we have to fight these battles and struggles and challenges every day all by ourselves. At least that's what it feels like. But there's comfort that is found in salvation through Jesus alone, never will I leave you. That's the voice of our good shepherd. Never will I forsake you. I am with you always. There is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And if anyone tells you other than that, all you have to do is remember your good shepherd. That salvation is in Jesus alone. And he has done it. You know how you know. And you can be confident of this. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And that's our joy and celebration. And that's our confidence and it's our faith. Praise be to God alone that he has created that within us and sustains it within us now and until life everlasting. Amen. And now may that amazing grace of God and the peace that we draw from it, let it keep your hearts and your minds and lives in him now and until life everlasting. Amen. It is with thanksgiving in our hearts that we thankfully, lovingly, and joyfully, and trustingly offer back to him the first fruit offerings of our hearts, that is, of ourselves, as well as of our hands.
We pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus. Us and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, we give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone. A trust, O Lord, from thee. Shepherd of Israel, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have sought out your sheep and you gathered us into your flock. Keep us always in your fold and guard us from every wolf and snare. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you alone gather us as your sheep and send faithful shepherds to us. Call all who have wandered from your flock and bless the faithful shepherds who gather them through the voice of your word. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, your Son has called us to love one another. Turn us in love toward our neighbors closest to us, especially within our own homes, that we may daily show our confidence in God by deed and truth, laying down our lives as Christ first did for us. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Lord, through the Paschal Lamb, you have wrought peace between man and God. By your gift of good government, grant peace and good days also to our citizens and between the nations of the world, that we and all our neighbors may lead quiet lives in godly contentment. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, by the fruits of the good shepherd, Jesus, his life from and his resurrection and life from the dead, you secured forgiveness for our troubled consciences. Bless also with temporal health and well-being those who suffer among us, especially be with Kim Dahm, Joanne Walsh, Justin Miller, Phyllis Todd, Susan Utech, Sarah Hansen. Be with Beth, Ken Todd, Kimberly Christensen, Pastor Jeff Walsh, Howie Holen Reed, Roxanne Dahm, and Matt Legrand. Be with Josh Legrand, Bonnie Schneider, Debbie Langenberg, Bob Gruber, John Murray, and Jennifer Veen. Be with Titus Dedeker, Ruth Cornell, Susie Awe, Wanda Grome, Marlene Veen, and Mike Wright. Be with Rob Reed, Nathan Chester, Kim Warner, Catherine Hoffman, Dawn Anderson, Jessica Jorgensen, Fred Laskowski. Be with Red Ed Radinus, Margot Halverson, Derek Durant, Daryl Dom, Jerry Lovell, Marcy Hoffman. Be with Tanya Gierke, Jill Dykstra, Jessica Moeller, Judy Block, Beverly Rankin. Send your Holy Spirit upon them and give them peace amidst their affliction. And according to your good and gracious will, create the miracle of health and healing. Also send your Holy Spirit upon all who are shut in. Be with Shirley Patrick, Teresa Santee, Jane Winter, Bob Jager, Lois Went, Florence Knopp, Lois LaCour, Kay Nelson, Annette Paw, Sharon Weber, and Donna Lovell. Grant them aid in this moment, and even more so, true immortal health in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord of love, we know that we love because you first loved us. And nowhere else is that shown better than the cross and the empty tomb of our Savior Jesus. And Lord, we thank and praise you for that love that's shown between husband and wife. We humbly implore you to please be with Adam Awe and Cassie Montez as they will be united in marriage this Saturday. Lord, help them to look toward you as the rock and foundation of their married life together. Keep them in your care and grace and build them up in your good love that they can show that love and forgiveness to one another. Guide them and bless them in their upcoming marriage. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, defend your church here on earth, especially the pastors and the people who faithfully gather together at Grace Lutheran Church in Wayne, Nebraska, at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Farmville, Iowa, at Grace Lutheran Church in Fayette, Iowa, at St. John Lutheran Church in Fenton, Iowa. Be with the entire Missouri district of our own Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. And be with the faculty, the staff, and students at Concordia University in St. Paul, Minnesota. 
Send your Holy Spirit upon our brothers and sisters at the Hope Springs Community of Faith Church in Sioux City, Iowa, and the Abundant New Life First Lutheran Church in South Sioux City, Nebraska. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our shepherd, you calm all fears in this valley of the shadow of death, and you prepare the holy table of your son's testament for us in the presence of our enemies. Grant us repentant and faithful hearts, trusting in your promise that through your holy sacrament, you give us your very body and blood connected with simple bread and wine, that through this means of grace, we are strengthened in this faith in you. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We rise and pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Page 160. Page 160. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty God, merciful Father, that through our good shepherd of the sheep, he may continue to strengthen us in our faith in you. Guide us and bless us in that grace and faith, trusting in your promises. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us to you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you. 
This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the very body of Jesus given for you. Take and drink. This is the very blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. And now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you, keep you in that true faith until life everlasting. Born his peace and his joy because your sins are This is the very blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink the very blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink. This is the blood of Jesus shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. And now may this body and
shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ pray for you. And keep you in that true faith until life everlasting. Thronius peace and his joy because your sins are drink. This is the very blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink the very blood of Jesus, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink the very blood of Jesus, shed for you. And now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in that true faith until life ever
We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord now bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Thank you.